Good evening and thanks for joining us. As we long for an end to the stranglehold this virus has on the world, there's a sobering reality check tonight on how much we still don't know about COVID-19. The World Health Organization says it's possible it could be years before it's under control and we may have to learn to live with it. More on that in just a moment. The best case scenario is a safe, effective vaccine that's made available to everyone. That doesn't exist yet. But Health Canada did announce other progress today. It has approved the first serological test in Canada, a test for antibodies to determine who has been exposed to COVID-19 and who could possibly be immune. This is a critical step for the work of the COVID-19 Immunity Task Force. These tests will help us better understand immunity against the virus and how it spreads so we can keep Canadians safe and healthy. This is not the swab test to find out if you have an active case of COVID-19. It's a blood test to detect antibodies, which would reveal if you've been infected in the past, perhaps without any symptoms. Here's why that's important. There are now more than 72,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada. Those account for the people tested. It doesn't account for those who had the virus but showed few or no symptoms and were never tested. So we still don't know how prevalent the virus is in society, nor do we know how many people might be immune to it. Without that, it's difficult to know where restrictions can be safely lifted. There's still a great deal we don't know. Heather Yorick's West explains how this newly approved test works and the questions it might help answer. The company behind the first COVID-19 serology test approved for use in Canada is from one of the first countries to be hit hard by COVID-19. The fact that Italy unfortunately have over 30,000 um, uh, dead people from this uh, um, really devastating uh, pandemic uh, gave us the opportunity to very quickly um, have clinical samples and develop a very good assay. The blood test was approved for use in Europe and the U.S. at the end of April. The company says it's now shipping kits worldwide. It plans to produce 5 million this month, 10 million in June. I can tell you that 10 million per month, which sounds like a huge number, it's a fraction of what countries are looking for. Having an effective serological test is vital, especially as businesses start to look at reopening, because knowing who has already had this virus could help public health officials determine who may be immune to future infections. Problem is, we still don't know enough about this virus to be sure. The mere presence of antibodies alone does not mean we are protected, and we shouldn't be using this as a green light to say that we are fully immune to the virus. We have to study the immunology uh, the immune response to the virus at the same time. And then we can interpret these tests as to what they mean for an individual. For now, Dr. Teresa Tam sees the new test as a research tool, a way to learn more about how the virus behaves. It will also be used to determine how many Canadians may have been infected during this first wave. The approach um, that we're um, taking in Canada is to use these tests, first of all, in the context of uh, population studies. This is a fantastic tool. This is going to provide a lot of insight, but this is not, at this point, a gateway to know who's fully protected and safe to go back to work with no other precautions. So while something like an immunity passport may not be here yet, it is getting closer. And the approval of this test is an important step. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Now to the hard reality check from the World Health Organization today. Dr. Mike Ryan, an epidemiologist and head of the emergencies program, says COVID-19 may be with us for years. There is still so much we don't understand about the virus, and he says no one can make promises or give firm dates on when it will no longer be public enemy number one. And I think it's important to, uh, to put this on the table. This virus may become just another endemic virus in our communities. And this virus may never go away. HIV has not gone away, but we've come to terms with the virus and we have found the therapies and we've found the prevention methods. And I'm not comparing the two diseases, but I think it is important that we're realistic. And I don't think anyone can predict when or if this disease will disappear. We do have one great hope. If we do find a highly effective vaccine uh, that we can distribute to, uh, to everyone who needs it in the world, one of the many uncertainties about the virus is the impact on children. Few kids are getting sick, but some are getting very sick with a mysterious syndrome believed to be linked to COVID-19. 
Ontario's health ministry has revised its definition of COVID-19 now to include what's referred to as a multi-system inflammatory vasculitis, a condition similar to Kawasaki syndrome. A direct connection between the coronavirus and this syndrome has not been confirmed. Doctors and patients are urged to monitor kids for symptoms, including persistent fever, rash, abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea. There have been reports of deaths in children associated with inflammatory illnesses in other countries, none here in Canada. There's so much information surrounding coronavirus out there now. We know you have questions. Email your questions at globalnews.ca. Tune in to Global National or go to globalnews.ca slash coronavirus now to find the answers.